Well, today we're going to do this countertop. I've already unscrewed it. It had four screws, one in each corner. I uh, just need to cut this off. Well, yeah, we'll just run a blade across it real quick and cut it loose. All good. So I measured out the counter, the old countertop, 35 and a half. I don't have a square with me. When you're cutting countertops, you want to make a one clean pass. You don't want to stop. So I always try to try to get myself to where I know that I'm gonna be complete through. It's gonna be a little uncomfortable from the side. Yeah. As long as I can see the mark. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to see the mark. I'm up too high. Mm -hmm. Well, could do it the old school way. Cut the backsplash first, that way I can see where I'm going. But I'm right-handed, so it makes it difficult for, yeah. Best way to do this when you're working by yourself is five-gallon buckets. So let's transition this over to uh, five-gallon buckets. Okay, that way I'm not going to be putting any corners, edges in a bind. It, everything is supported. I just need to make the cut. Chipper there, nothing major. That's all good. Got two little chippers. That'd be all right. Tell them the corner buds right there. <laughs> so for spots like this up here, um, I always use great stuff. I, I I use this all the time, but just crack it open a little bit, and we're gonna fill in all these holes. And we're gonna let this stuff dry. Uh, and then we can cut it off flush with drywall and mud over top of it. There's a lot of you guys haven't seen this yet, but I use this for everything. Oh, my gun's sticking. Gotta watch it. Got a little stick to it. Yep, we're gonna need to be clean. It's a little sticky. Yes, I never, I always just close the valve on mine and let it go. But every once in a while, I'll start getting that sticky where the trigger's not, it's not pull, it's not popping back like it should to shut it off. So I have to manually just shut the valve. When it gets like that, then I will take it off the gun and, and do a cleaning on it. I have the spray to hook it up and blow through. So it's not a big deal. 
it's a very, very seldom that it does that. But so when this dries, I can cut it flat and then put mud over top of it, make it look pretty. Cool. That's how I do drywall patches because I don't want to be putting screws and boards and all kinds of crap in there. But like I said, <clears throat> the great stuff, man, this is the, the red. It's a, like a fire seal. This is really good stuff. The yellow stuff you don't want to use. I think it's in a blue can. Uh, for doing stuff like this because the foam is yellow and it stays soft That's stuff that you want to put around windows and doors. So it's like blown in insulation It stays soft um, Like you can mash it kind of soft this stuff here when it dries is pretty hard you I'll have to cut that with a saw but You'll see cool. Let's do something else Probably not gonna be able to see these little spots But they're, they're about as round as a pencil. This is a little excessive, <laughs> but you can do it. That's a little excessive. But it fills in the hole so that when I go to put a cut of mud over it, it's, I'm not gonna have an issue. Cool. Okay, so I got a list of steps, stuff I need for the sink. I have to, I'm gonna redo the drain. I'll show you why. The P-trap, or this line here, is tipped down. Uh, number two, it's too close to this. Um, so I'm gonna cut it off back there and Put the garbage disposal over here on this side of the sink and put the drain on this side. That way I can do a cross pipe, drop down and go into there. So, and then put a wire end on the garbage disposable. I need a piece of trim for that. <coughs> I need to, I need a microwave for this, a shorty. It's a 10 inch microwave. And then on the, the countertop, I need my heat gun to glue the sides on. So we'll do that when we get back. Do parts list and uh, or a parts run. Go from there. So when I'm doing a project like this, I usually try to get everything I need, but there's a lot of stuff that'll come up. You'd be like, oh crap, you know, um, like this, the spot up here. Uh, that's actually good drywall. It's just the seam has popped, so um, it's got a little dip to it. So I can float that out. But the ceiling there, a little bitty dip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pole jack and I'm gonna crack the drywall, push it up. And then I'll put a piece of corner bead there that will, um, it'll hold, it'll help to keep that up so it doesn't sag back down. Cool? Cause I gotta mud that anyways, you know. New, uh, brackets and stuff there's always something to fix bro let's go get parts so the reason why that's dipped right there it's not going up at all I'll show you. Thanks for choice. Uh, I'll explain this here. Hold on. So, a couple years back, I found a lot of these decks where the floor jo the joists are running off of the floor joists, and they go outside, right? They stick outside like four and a half foot, whatever. And that's what they built the decks on, right? Well, I found a crap ton of them that were rotted off. They were literally rotted off um, and they were getting ready to fall. So they had to come through and reinforce all the decks and put these supports in and put new cross beams across here on all of the uh, second and third floor decks because they were, they were basically falling off the building so they had to uh, support them you know 
they just had to reinforce them. So, that's the reason why that, that will not go up. It's because that's the old floor joist that has rotted off. It's pushed down or it's out of wobble, but I can't fix it. So we're just gonna butt over it. So when you're putting your uh, end caps on, you can take a, I use a heat gun, but you can take an iron, but I think it's faster to do it this way. I'll heat up the glue first. Now I'll let that cool down for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll take the router and run that. Run it around this edge to knock that, to get it flush. You can take a file. You can try to hold that to a certain spot where everything's nice and smooth, and then take a file to it. That's just a lot of work. I always just take a little, it's just a router bit, run it around there. I'll go see if I can, while that's going down, I go get that and uh, we'll route that off. So the bit that I put in my uh, router, it's just a half inch. Let me get that for Just a half inch. Just a bit with a bearing on the end of it. That way it uh, rides against the countertop and uh, cleans it off. Scraping that excess glue off there. When you do that, it uh, builds up a little glue residue on the edge. And I got a little out on that side right there. Knock that high edge down. Glue off, and we're good to go, bro. Tell how off that countertop was. Oh, my bad. Man, that's tight, bro. Wow. Wow. That's freaking tight. I can't move it up, I can't move it. The stove won't come out. Fridge is against the freaking frame. The fridge over there. The fridge is against the wall. Wow. That's weird. Down. Wow. We're 
to rinse the rest of that off. Get it set in there, I see. So the old countertop, they had cut the end plate down to match the countertop, right? Because the countertop is exactly the width of the cabinet, which is exactly the width of the opening. This countertop, I normally don't put these on there, but I'm going to have to on this case. These are the blocks that come with the countertop. I normally don't put those on. But in this case, I have to because that countertop set down farther. So I need this countertop to sit on top. So we'll go ahead and nail these on and uh, <laughs> try it again. Fits in there a little better. Just a little bit higher too. And it covers up that back line, so we're good to go on that. I put the door. I got to put the mount to the countertop, and then put the door back. So my wire from my garbage disposal is not long enough to go over there. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to put a box back there and put a new wire to feed the garbage disposal because I'm not putting it back in here. I got. I already bought the parts to move it. So uh, so. I'm going to cut it off back here, put a cap on it, cut it off here, put a, a threaded uh, mail on here. That way I can redo all this. Cool? But, I want to show you something. So I watch a lot of plumbing shows, right? That's just curiosity kind of stuff. But, anyways, I was watching this guy out of uh, El or overseas, England, and he's always got these little buckets but they're really strange they're almost square but the sides fold and if you bend them they stay where you bend them anyway so i got on uh, uh amazon these little sand bowls because i can make it as big as i want i take you i can make it bigger like that but if i'm underneath the toilet i can get it to go behind behind the shutoff valve and let it drip down Ain't that cool? <laughs> I'm being a kid. Anyways, I got it out because I got to cut this drain off. It's going to be nasty. <laughs> the other reason why I got this is because it collapses and I can hang it on my uh, Omni wall in the van and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it uh, getting in my way. Feel me? So you got circumstances like this? Oh yeah. Ain't that cute? Got me a little sand bucket. I don't have a lot of room here. Let's see if I'm gonna be even long enough. Get some parts out here on the floor, brother. Go ahead and pick a file. Man, I'm glad I'm inside today. Because it is freaking hot outside. Looks like I'm going to have plenty of room to get out far enough. Ain't that cute? I'm supposed to put a ring on there? Oh. Be a first for me. Let's see if we get tight. It looks like it's supposed to have a ring on it. That's why I'm pre-shooting this. I bet you it's supposed to. Cause you know these engineers, they like just mess up the good stuff. See that? The flat edge. I wonder. Am I supposed to put one on? Now, why couldn't you just put a freaking benut? I don't know if that. I don't think so. No. No worries. I just assumed it because they had that lip on there. These newfangled ones, man. I'm old school, bro. But that's a pretty good tight fit, man. We'll just let that go. Learn something new every day. I just assumed it was going to have to have another one there. 
a rubber a rubber let's put a rubber on it let's see how far we're gonna have to go back of course I know it's not glued so don't freak out man I'm just pre-fitting it see how far I gotta go back <laughs> This is going to be hmm, pretty freaking close. Ooh, pretty close. The bend dropped straight down. Might have to bend it a little bit. All right. It's always much fun. Another on the floor, man. So that's gonna go right there. We'll put the drop on there. I can pretty well see that that's not gonna work out too well for me. That's not gonna work out too well. Okay. So I can get that to go over there. Yeah, it's gonna have a slight bow to it. I don't like having a bow to it. That's that's quite a bit off. Cute. I might have to put a Yeah. Yeah, it's straight up and down I'm hitting the side. I need to be over there. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to put a, a forty five on that or something. I gotta get it over here where it works better, which is fine because I've got another piece of pipe there I can cut off. That way I'm this angle. Feel me? If I just slightly turn it. Actually, if I put a 45 out there. Yeah. See what I'm saying? If I do like a, th what is that? 45? 35? Whatever. I'm not very good at angles. <laughs> I just need to go that way. Yeah, that, that'll work out. Well, it's just like this. I just need it down here. Cool. Well, I'll probably have to dig in. I'm pretty sure I got one of those in the shop because I'm always buying those. So, I'm going to work on put that on, put that on, you know, the strainers, and then we'll work on the rest of it. Probably not. It's 4 o'clock. Cool. For all my newbies, subscribers, this is my favorite kind of strainer. I love this. You can buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot or you can order through HD. Um, it, it, there's nothing special about it except how it goes together. Just like so. It's a big bolt. Take off the nut off the bottom. Take off the casket and pat your bowl, your paper, rubber, all that goes on the bottom. You drop, put some plumber's putty around this, drop it in a hole that goes underneath, and then you tighten up one nut. That's all you got to do with this. Because normally you have that really big nut, and it spins out, and it pushes the rubber out of the way. This pinches the rubber, so you don't have to worry about that spreading out. Feel me? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and install this real quick. I always use plumber's play. That whole gimmick using uh, silicone, that just makes a freaking mess, man. Because then you got to get it out of the freaking sink after, you, you know what I'm saying, after you spread it out. And that just, that's, that's a job in itself, just getting that off there. Just put a little plumber's putty around the rim. That's all you got to do. It ain't got to be a whole bunch, just a little bit. That's all you got to do with it. Put it in the hole. Make sure it's centered. Push it down. Put everything underneath. You're good to go. Cool. Paper. Paper's on the bottom. Paper's on the bottom. Squeeze it up there. Let's crank it around. That's it. Just keep it. You can eyeball it, but just torque it in, man. Then 
and yes this is aka oil wrench you can get a hold of inch and a half inch and a quarter you can do your toilet bolt or your tank toilet tank uh, gaskets where the two mount together it'll get a hold quite a bit of really big stuff that's that's it that's all I gotta do with it I don't know how much extra I'm gonna get but I in that book garbage disposable in talk to Bulber I put this little nipple in there and then we'll do the p-trap we'll do it tomorrow stay tuned so I got a work order for a drippy faucet it's the antique stuff the old two handle faucets anyways I despise touching them because I always know I've worked on enough of them to know so I have to go find new cartridges because the ends are broke off and the screw there's only half of it left I can't put another washer in there because the screws gone so on to the rabbit hole you know what I'm saying because I don't know if Lowe's is gonna have any of these they may I doubt it but I may end up having to go over to Ace Hardware which is old hardware store and see if they've got them um, worst case scenario if I can just find the screw then I'll be good to go and we'll go from there I think I've got some of these washers um, but if I can't find them then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, the little Dremel tool and I'm gonna clean all this off and put never seize on there and that'll prevent this from seizing up again because I like to never got that thing out of there but we'll do the repairs when we get back I think I've got I've got some more so let me go check the shop real quick if I do then uh, we'll go the cheap repair way so I was able to find the war the little um, washers these are quarter inch uh, but I need that screw I've got to get that to focus anyways I gotta go find that screw brass let's do it so I was able to find so I was able to find brand new ones whatever <laughs> This thing's falling off the toilet over here on me. Um, so these are brand new ones. Comes with the new um, metal washer or seat, but I'm not gonna replace those today because they're in really good condition. So, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna run the Dremel or I'm gonna run the little sander disc inside the holes, kind of clean it up a little bit before I put these in. And then put some WD-40 on it. That should clean it up. That's just to clean up the threads. And now on, this is the part that screws on the end. It's got a lot of buildup in there. So I'm gonna clean these out too. use the cone one to get in there. Let's get this off. Put the other one on. I just hand tied them. I'll crank them down.
this is the part that screwed on here for the beauty ring. So now that we got this all cleaned up, push a little WD-40 on the threads. You just push down on it. Put it on the other micro threads. And screw it. Clean up and go.